Okay, next we're gonna do some basic editing in Reaper. Now I have an item right here, a media item, based on the previous tutorial. We recorded an acoustic guitar. Let's hear it. So Reaper calls this a media item, which is basically a container that holds audio, MIDI, or video, right here. And we can edit it by moving it around, by grabbing it and dragging it, we can copy and paste it, go up here to the edit menu and choose to copy the item or cut it or paste it. Now there's two different types of copying and cutting. I'll explain that clearer later. But the default way is by ignoring the time selection. So if we copy it and then paste it over here, we now have two items. But Reaper uses non-destructive editing which means these two items aren't gonna take up twice as much room on your hard drive. It's all happened virtually. So we can copy and paste them as much as we want and our file doesn't get any bigger. Paste, and we can undo all that by hitting undo. Undo, paste items, and Reaper has multiple undo. So we can keep undoing to go back to where we started. And all this is happening non-destructively. So if we cut this, it's still in our project. Now besides cutting, copying, or pasting, we could also use some tools. For instance, if we go over here and drag it, it just moves it around. But if we go to the edge here, see how our cursor changes? We could trim the item, like this. And it makes it shorter on the left side. We do the same thing on the right side. So it's very easy to edit and change our tools based on where we place our mouse. Another example is we could also create a fade in. If we go to the upper left corner and drag, see how our cursor changes? Now we could drag to create a fade in or fade out in the upper right. And we could adjust those curves by right clicking over here and change to linear or this curve, or any of them. But the default is this one. And we can readjust it from this line right here to change the length of the fade in, or the length of the fade out, right here. And if we want to get rid of it, just move it to the edge, and the fade disappears on both sides. So all this can be done without switching any tools. We could just move our cursor to a different place, and it behaves differently. Trimming, adding fades. We can even stretch our items by holding out a modifier. On PC, it's Alt. On Mac, it's Option. And if you hold it down in the corner here, the tool changes to a hand, letting us know we can stretch the item. If we condense it like this, it's gonna play back faster. Or slower if we stretch it the other way. And we can see the rate of how fast it's playing back right up here. Let's undo that, and it's back to normal. Now we can also split our items. Let's zoom in, put our cursor right there, hit S, and now we split our item into two separate items, one over here and one over here, making it easy to delete things. So I can click here, split it, and then just delete this. Or cut it here and here. And later on, if we want to put it all back together, we can just select it all, hold down Shift, go to the item menu, and choose Heal Splits in Items. All the splits are healed. They go back to being one item. Now, this is only going to work if we don't change the timing of any of those items. So let's undo that. If we move this around, to say over here. Now if we try to heal it, it only heals the items we didn't move. But we could still make it one item if we want. Let's undo that. Instead, we can go to item, 
and choose the option down here, Glue Items. This is going to create a whole new item based on what we selected. So if we hit that, it creates a whole new item based on the timing that we just adjusted. That's called gluing. Let's undo all that. Now we could also duplicate while moving. Let's scroll out. If we select this, hold down Control on the PC or Command on the Mac and drag it over. See how our tool changes? And we can drag it over to here and create a copy. Do it again. Now if you notice, as I'm dragging it over, it's crossfading. Like this. Which means this audio is fading out while this audio is fading in. That's on by default. Right over here, crossfade. If we turn it off and drag it over, it no longer crossfades. Instead, it places the audio on top of each other. So in this situation, we're going to hear both items. Sounds pretty messy, but Reaper has the option of having more than one piece of audio on top of each other. And that can get confusing. If you want to avoid that, let's put this back. Under Options, turn on Trim Content Behind Media Items when editing. If we choose that and drag an item on top of another one, it trims the first one. So we pull this back, see what's trimmed. It doesn't place it on top of each other. It actually trims the first one to make room for the second one. This way, at any point, we're only hearing one piece of audio at a time on a given track. So if you prefer working that way, just turn this option on right here. Trim content behind media items when editing which is off by default. Let's undo all this. Now, as I mentioned earlier, there's two types of cuts and copies, as you can see over here. And they're based on time selection. This option over here is going to copy our items within the time selection. And the key command to do that just adds a shift. So on the PC, it's shift Control c and on the Mac, it's Shift Command C. And it's the same for cut down here. If you want to cut within a time selection, you just add Shift to the key command. So on PC, it's Shift Control X. And on Mac, it's Shift Command X. So how it works is if we create a time selection right here, normally, if we cut this, it cuts the whole thing. But if we add Shift to the key command, or choose this one, it's going to cut within the time selection. So it looks like this. It just cuts within our time selection. So if we cut this and paste over here, it only pasted what was in the time selection over here. It doesn't cut the whole thing. Now it's important when we do this, we have to select the items. Let me show you. Let's duplicate this by dragging this down to another track. Let's say we want to do the same thing. We want to select from here to here. We need to select these items in order to cut them. If I just cut within the time selection, it doesn't do anything. Reaper doesn't know what to cut. So what you want to do, if they're next to each other, hold down Shift and select them both. Or if they're not next to each other, to make another track. On the PC, hold down Control. On the Mac, you hold down Command and select them. And now it's just going to cut or copy what's in the time selection that's also selected. So if we do it, just those two items were cut. This item wasn't cut. So if we click over here to paste it, just those two get pasted, not this one over here. So it's important to select the items when you're performing that action. Let's undo this again. Now we could also split our items at the time selection. Let's say we wanted to split from here to here. Instead of doing it this way, hitting split twice, instead, you can make a time selection right here, go to item, and choose split items at time selection. So if we do it here, or the key command, shift S. If we do that, it splits in both places. So you're creating two splits at once. Undo it. Let's do it again. 
Time select from here to here. Make sure we select it. Hit Shift S. And it splits the item in two places. Now we could also trim the items the same way. Let's create two tracks again by duplicating. Now let's say we want to trim this section right over here. We just want to keep these two notes on both of these tracks. We could select from here to here, select both items, and go to the item menu and choose Trim Items to select that area. That's going to cut off the front and the back on both of these items. See? Well, that space over here is missing. Undo it and redo it. So it's great for trimming unwanted audio. Let's say there's a bit of noise in the beginning over here. You want to get rid of it. Select from here to the end. And trim items to selected area. And it trims them to get rid of any extra noise. Undo again. Now we could also move the audio within the item. So instead of moving it like this, we could move it within the item. On the PC, hold on Alt. On the Mac, hold on Option. See how our cursor changes? And drag it like this. And it moves the audio, but doesn't move the item, which is really useful for editing takes, as you'll see later. But when you do this, you might notice one problem. See how audio shows up on this side? That's because the items, by default, are looping. So what we're seeing over here, based on a little groove right here, is actually the back of the item. Over here, let's undo it. It's moving the item because it's looped. So we're seeing the back when we shift it within the item. And like I said, this is on by default. So if we trim this out, it's going to loop. And we can see it looping right here. Each one of these grooves is another loop. Now, if you don't want it to do that, we could turn it off in the preferences. If we go to Media Item Defaults under Project, here are the preferences that are turned on. To Loop Source, for Imported Items, MIDI Items, and Recorded Items. The acoustic guitar that we're working on is a recorded item. So by default, it's going to loop. We could turn it off here before we record it if we don't like that behavior, or we could turn it off afterwards. Just double click. It opens up the media item properties, which I'll explain in a later chapter, but we could turn looping off for this item right here. Hit OK. Now it's no longer looping. So when you drag it out, it's just silence which is still useful for lining things up. For instance, let's say the timing of this is perfect. When this is sitting right here, having that extra space makes it easy to copy and paste when you place it on the grid. So when dragging it out, even past the beginning of the file, we can place it on the grid, make sure the timing is right by moving this around, and then we can paste it to other parts of the song and know that it's going to line up. So I can copy, Paste it to bar 7, and it's going to stay in time with the song. Now, one other thing I should mention, let's undo all this, is that we could edit multiple items at the same time. Let's make three of these. And let's make two tracks. Let's make three. Now, we could edit all of these at the same time just by selecting them and do things like trimming. And they all trim together from the front and the back. We could time stretch them together like this. We could move the audio all together just by having all of them selected. Or some of them, like this one, this one, and this one. Just trim the end or the beginning or the rate. And of course, we can cut and paste multiple items that are selected just as easily. So anyway, that's the basics of editing in Reaper. We'll get to more complex stuff in the later chapters. But for now, I think you get the idea. So let's move on.
Bye.